Hey guys, this is Entity from Deuces Cracked. Today's video is going to focus on a very important part of one of the more advanced aspects of EV calculations, understanding fold equity. Fold equity in simple terms is the likelihood that a bet or raise will induce your opponent to fold. Most poker players have learned that there are many situations where raising as a semi-bluff is correct. Fold equity is what allows this to be correct. Fold equity is measured by which hands in our opponent's range they will fold to a bet or a raise. It's easiest to understand fold equity when looking at an example. Let's say we're playing limit hold'em and it's folded to the button who raises. He's a fairly loose aggressive player so his raising range is pretty wide here. We call in the big blind with 8-7 of spades. The flop is king 6-2 with two spades. We check and our opponent bets. We decide to call. The turn is the five of clubs. We check and our opponent bets again. What should we do now? Clearly it's more than acceptable for us to call. We're getting four to one and we have an open-ended straight draw, a flush draw, and our pair outs might even be good. Against an aggressive opponent, we've got around 41% pot equity here, so calling is fine. But what about deciding to raise? This question is fairly complex because there are a lot of different questions that need to be answered in order to answer whether or not raising is good. First, we need to think about how wide our opponent's hand range is for betting the turn. What hands will he bet and then what hands will he fold? What hands will he end up calling our raise with? Additionally, what is our equity against the hands that he will call our raise with? We'll talk about larger scale expected value semi-bluff raising calcs in the future, but for now I'm going to break this down into the simplest possible calculation. We're going to find out how often our opponent needs to fold the turn in order for a semi-bluff to be profitable on its own. In order for us to calculate this, we use the following formula. Expected value equals the percentage of chance that our opponent folds multiplied by the pot size minus the percentage chance that our opponent calls times the amount that we risk. In this case, we know that we want to solve for how often our opponent folds. Here's how the formula looks. As you can see, what we're trying to solve for is an expected value of zero. We're plugging in the variables fold and call as f and one minus f. The size of the pot is 40 and the amount that we're risking is 20. Plugging in all of these variables, we get the following formula. Solve for f and you can figure out how often you need your opponent to fold. Pause the video here for a moment and solve for f. What this tells us in this case is that we need our opponent to fold one third of the time in order for our bluff to profit immediately. You don't have to do all this math every single time you want to calculate fold equity, fortunately. Just remember that the ratio of bets that you risk to the number of bets in the pot after you raise is the percentage chance you need him to fold. In this case, you're risking 20 and you'd win 60. 20 divided by 60 equals one third equals you need one third fold equity. This wraps up our basic discussion on fold equity. This has been one of our more math heavy episodes so far. So if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask them in the forums and I'll clarify. This has been Entity for Deuces Cracked, signing off.